All right, so welcome to another episode of the 100K Hairstylist Show. Oh my goodness gracious, we have a treat for you today. So we are going to just go ahead and jump right on in because I am so excited to give you guys all the details. Now, if you're struggling financially at all as a hairstylist and you're looking up to those people who are making six figures and you want to be that too, then this video is definitely for you. Now, to become financially free, you have to make sure that you have the best salon systems in place. I've discovered these systems that I'm going to share with you that will help you become a six-figure hairstylist. I've shared them with countless other people who have implemented them and are living their best lives. I want that for you too. So I'm going to share some of the top ones with you today. So let's go ahead and jump right on into those tips without further ado. All right. So first things first, top earners have a flow. All right. This flow is a system that is repeated with every single guest. Now, this flow feeds all of the numbers that we talked about in our last podcast. And if you haven't checked that out, I encourage you to do that. These are all of the important key numbers that are going to uh, drive your success as a hairdresser. And so um, definitely check those out because what we're going to be learning today are going to feed all of those numbers. All right. Step one, my friend, prep work. Okay, the first thing that you should do when you get into work is pull up your schedule for the day. Now, I know a lot of you already do this, but it's different from just pulling up your schedule and seeing who's on your books. What you want to do is you want to see what opportunities there are to fill white space that you might have. Because let's say you have a haircut booked here, and then you've got an hour gap, and you've got a color touch-up booked after that. You want to be able to figure out how you're going to fill that gap, okay? So look over the notes of your customer and prepare for each one. So let's say that haircut, for example, that was the first... um, appointment that you had on your books. You know, has that person gotten a color service in the past? Is there something that you can recommend to them as the season is changing here to give them a gloss or something to refresh their color a little bit? Therefore, booking something in that time slot. All right. So it's really important that you pull up your books, take a look at your day and figure out what holes you can fill and how you can fill them. All right, so that is going to be a key driver right there, and that will start your day off to success if you just look at how you can fill the white space in your books. I can't tell you how many people I know as hairdressers come into the salon, look at their schedule, and they're like, oh, I have this person, this person, this person today, and then that's it. They don't even look at any opportunities that are available to fill that white space on their books, because let's face it, The old age uh, saying is time is money. And if you've got extra time, you've got to be able to figure out how to fill that so that you can make more money. All right. So once you've got that settled in your mind and you know exactly what you're going to be recommending and where you're going to be going, of course, it's going to come down to the greeting. Uh, Greedy, introducing yourself if you have a new guest. Um, These days, it's more of an elbow bump because um, we can't shake hands. Um, If they're new, you want to welcome them to the salon, give them a quick tour. And um, regardless of whether they're new or not, you want to talk about any promotions you have in the salon. So have you heard about our current Mother's Day special? All All of our products are 15% off, you know, things like that to just kind of get them in the spirit of shopping. So it all starts in the very beginning with the greeting, introducing yourself, setting them up for a good salon experience and giving them any information on any kind of promotions that you might be having. So once you have them in your chair, you're going to go ahead and move on to step three, which is the consultation. Now, um, if you guys are part of the Hairstylist Growth Accelerator, which is my premium program, I created this super easy checklist that will have you giving consultations that will wow your guests and transform your business. There is no doubt about it. Say goodbye to that talker that you have in your chair. Um, You know who she is. She's that one that sits down and wants to talk about anything and everything except for her hair. And we know that we're on a time schedule and we're like, girl, be quiet because we got to (laughs) go. 
So with the consultation checklist, it is going to allow you to keep things moving in a timely manner without being rude or um, unappreciative of what that person has to say. You just get back on track right away. And um, like I said, the consultation checklist helps you with that. So if you're not a part of the HGA um, community, definitely join. Now, remember, your job is to deliver on solving guests' challenges. So that's exactly what we want to be talking about during the consultation, is what challenges they're having and how you can address them. If you clear that right up front, you are going to be golden as far as your consultation goes. Because for the challenges, it could be addressed with retail products. It could be addressed with um, certain service techniques, with color techniques. And at the end of the uh, service, your guest is going to feel like you delivered on everything that they wanted because you solved their challenges. It really is that simple. So you want to gather, you know, what their goals are for their hair, and then you want to move right on into listening for cues on what challenges they're having. So after a great consultation, you want to move right along into step four, which is the shampoo, okay? Now, this could come uh, before a haircut or even after a color service, um, but when you get to the shampoo portion, you're going to want to make sure that you pay attention here. This is probably the best part of your guest experience in the salon. It's one of the parts they look forward to the most. There are there are some people that hate the shampoo ball and they want to just get in and out of there as quick as possible and that's okay too. But a majority of people, 99.9% .9 of people, they want the whole experience. They want a head massage. They want um, you know, you to talk about the products that you're using on their hair and um, you know, this is an opportunity for you to even give them a potential value add-on treatment. You know, I'm seeing that your hair is feeling a little bit dry, or you've mentioned to me that your hair is feeling that it is a little bit brittle. I want to go ahead and give you an in-salon treatment to, you know, soften the hair or um, reduce the frizz or make it feel stronger. And, um, you know, if you had a $10 treatment times 40 guests in a month, you are going to be making $4,800 a year. That's crazy. That is a lot of extra money that you're leaving on the table if you don't make these recommendations. I know that people are like, oh, treatments, whatever. But uh, in a year, $4,800, is it really whatever? I don't think so. So definitely make those recommendations. There is no doubt about it. And the head massage is key. Do not skimp on the head massage. This is one of the favorite parts of a guest experience. Your tips will increase. Your satisfaction of customer experience will increase. And you'll be moving in the right direction. So shampoo, huge. Now, step five is going to be check-ins. Let's say that, um, you know, your customer is uh, sitting with the hair color on their hair. You don't just want to leave them. You want to have opportunities to check in on them and ask them how they're doing. But not only that, is there anything that you can get them? I know nowadays we can't really give them water and things like that because of COVID, but you want to just see overall how they're doing. And when things start to loosen up, you can start seeing if there's anything that you can do for them in that way. But... You want to also check in on them during your service. Oh my goodness. I see so many new hairdressers fall into the um, mute trap, is what I call it, where they're doing a service and there's extended periods of time where there's silence. And it's just awkward for everybody involved. Unless your customer's working or doing something else, um, it's just really strange. And so I always like to have moments of silence because, you know, they're important, but you also want to engage in conversation through questions. Do you have any plans for the rest of the day? What about vacations? Any vacations coming up? You'd be surprised how these simple open-ended questions lead to conversation that you wouldn't have ordinarily had had you not asked the questions. So check-ins. Key, my friend. Now, step six, you're moving on to the blow dry. You've completed all of the service. You are moving right along in. And um, I think an important question that a lot of people miss during the blow dry is how do you style your hair at home? <laughs> it's really that simple. And you'd be surprised how many people don't ask. If you are a hairdresser and you're not asking your customer how they style your hair, you're missing out on a huge opportunity to sell retail and a huge opportunity to build rapport with your customer. If you blow them out into this beautiful blowout, 
and they're never going to be able to achieve it at home, or they tell you, um, you know, it's beautiful, but I'll never be able to do this on my own. That is a, a cue right there that you haven't done your job. It's really, really important to make sure you work with what they can do and give them tips to add into their arsenal to make their life just a little bit easier. And while you're doing this, you can say things like what you're using as far as retail products and how you're using them. But most importantly, how they solve the challenges that you talked about. If you're experiencing frizz and dryness, this product is going to smooth your hair in the cuticle and get it feeling super soft. If you're um, lacking volume, you're going to put this at your root and it's going to give you that volume that you said you were looking for. Bam, solving those challenges right from the jump right there in the blow dry. You know, I always like to say things like, I have the perfect product to help with the frizz. Um, I use it on the ends before I style your hair, and it will give you that slip, and it is a miracle worker. I swear by it. It's one of our top sellers. And people will be like, oh my goodness, let me try it. And then they end up falling in love with it and taking the product because it solves their problem. Alrighty? So the blow dry, it's a huge opportunity to sell retail there. And to also maybe oper, uh, op, you know, recommend and have opportunity to uh, deliver services that you wouldn't have ordered, ordinarily thought of. If you've got your whole rest of your day available with white space, and you've got that one client on there for a haircut, and they mention that their hair is feeling frizzy, why would you not recommend a keratin treatment? At that point, you can apply the keratin, let it sit for 15 minutes, and then go ahead and continue on with the rest of the service because you have your whole day available. You just filled all all of that white space. So listen for these cues. Um, this is how six-figure stylists operate, is that they're able to dissect their customer journey and listen to their customers' challenges and offer solutions to those challenges that also give them opportunities to fill the white space on their books, thus making them more money. So there you have it right there. If you're not doing those things, you have to start doing them because these are the things that are going to give you top producer results. All right. With that all said, you've offered the new services. You've done the new services. You're now moving into the closing. We have them up front. And what I see a lot of people do is say, thank you, Sandy, so much for your time. I love seeing you. Bye. They'll take you from here. And they walk away. Um, We've just missed all all of the key opportunities to closing. First of it, let's talk about retail recap, okay? Here's all the things we used on you today, and here's why we use them, and here's the, the challenges that they solved for you. Did you want to take any of these home? It's really not that complicated. The, people are looking for you to do that. They want those retail products to solve their challenges. It's not, you know, I'm not a, people will say this thing like, I'm not a salesperson. I'm a hairstylist or I'm an artist, not a salesperson. Well, even as an artist, you have to um, use things like a canvas and paint and paint brushes to um, solve the many challenges that you have as an artist. The same thing applies to hair. You're just letting people know what you use so that they can pick those same brushes up and same paints and same whatever it is to use on themselves at home. So make sure that you recap what you used with their hair and why it solved their problems. Now, um, the other thing that you're going to want to do to close the sale is not only talk about retail, but you're also going to want to talk about their next service. So now I know we didn't have time to do that keratin service today that we talked about to solve your challenges with Frizz. These products are definitely going to help you, but the game changer is really going to be to get that service. So I recommend that we go in about, you know, a week or two weeks and we book that keratin service and get you frizz free so that you're feeling awesome about your hair. So now you've just pre-booked the customer for a large service in the in the recent future and um, you gave a recommendation on, on when they can uh, get that service. So there you have it. Set them up for their next appointment. If it's a standard appointment, like they get a color touch-up, I'm going to see you in six weeks from now. Let's get you booked for that. I want to make sure that you can get in on your time because I'm becoming very busy. That usually helps so that people understand that they can't just call and squeeze in an appointment, they have to book in advance to get in with you. And that's how you can start to set yourself up for success is by pre-booking. And then, of course, you want to review your services. This is often a missed opportunity, too. So you've went over retail, you've pre-booked their next appointment, and now you're pulling up their ticket with reception and you're going over their services. Huge! Oh my goodness gracious. So I have had people walk up front and they've added on a ton of services, keratin treatments, hair color services, and the person was only booked for a color touch-up. 
And they said they didn't go over the ticket and they left. And then suddenly they were like, oh, crap, I forgot to add on that partial highlight in that keratin treatment. And we only charged them for a color touch up. Well, most salons are going to take the accountability for that. And they're not going to call the customer up and charge them again for the missed services because it was their fault. So this is your opportunity to review the services, make sure they're all accurate and you can charge them appropriately so that you and the salon are not missing out on any money and services that you performed. Now, another key thing that I want to touch on here is when people sometimes are behind the chair, they get into a mindset of, oh, wow, that's going to be too much money. But you cannot dictate what a customer is going to want to spend their money on. If you did a service, charge them for the service, okay? There are no freebies in this industry. Freebies equal lost money in your paycheck, all right? You shouldn't be charging customers less than what you're giving them, and you shouldn't be giving them any type of free services unless something went wrong and you owe them something. If something didn't go wrong and you don't owe them something, what they owe you is to pay for that service. So, and you owe it to yourself so that you don't lose out on income. Something I just wanted to touch on there is that you must charge what you are worth, okay? Okay, so every single service you do, if you did it, charge them. It is what it is. This is how this works. And then, of course, review all those services. Make sure they're on that ticket so that they're charged appropriately. Thank them for the opportunity to serve them today. And I always like to, you know, say something along the lines of, I always enjoy seeing you um, because, you know, you build relationships with people and you enjoy seeing them. I can't wait to hear about how, you know, uh, the soccer game went for your kids or how your vacation went when I see you next time and I'll see you in six weeks. Bye. And then you're closing your service. And it's just that little something special in the end there that you remembered about the conversations that make them feel like they're not just coming in to get a bunch of services that you're charging them for, but they're also coming in to have great conversation with somebody that they appreciate. And that is you, their hairdresser. So, all right, guys. Now, um, that is that. I am so excited to have shared those things with you. If you start doing all of these small little tips, you are going to blow up as a hairdresser and you're going to excel. There is no doubt about it. Now, if you haven't already, you can um, join the Hairstylist Growth Accelerator. And I have that every guest, every time checklist that goes over all of what we talked about today in even greater detail. It's a handy little sheet that you can pull right on out and follow every single day until you get all of these systems down pat. Um, super easy breezy. If you're not a part of the community, go ahead and get a part of that now because the door are closing in June. So um, go to GartnerJames.com slash hairstylist growth. Thank you guys so much for being here with me today. And I will see you 